Well, as you are all aware, we are on part six. Well, you may not be aware of what part it is, but we're into this season of looking at our church covenant. You see it on the cover of your bulletin each week. But we're exploring our covenant. And we're looking at various phrases from within our covenant. And we do this in order to get to know it better, to get to, to see what it says, and in order to explore it so that possibly we can live it out more fully. Today we touch on what for many people is the touchiest of subjects, money. Part of our covenant says, and I quote, I'm going to read it just so you know, um, more combat immorality, uh, comfort, promote prosperity, spirituality, worship. Ah, here we are. Here it is. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church. Now, this is nothing new. <coughs> Every church talks about money from time to time. It comes up. As a matter of fact, it came up in the very early church in Acts 15. That was one of the first great controversies in the early church. But, you know, it's not just churches. Almost every organization, every group of people that gathers together has to, from time to time, talk about the M word, the Kilmarnock Volunteer Fire Department has the annual carnival. Uh, the big final drawing was last night. I'm told I didn't win. My phone didn't ring. But the carnival is fantastic. It's this great slice of Americana, and it's a lot of fun for kids of all ages. And we, we go there, we see people we know, and, and it really is fun, despite what I may sound like I'm saying. I really enjoy it. But the truth is, when we go and we, we we go up to the, the ticket window and we give our money over and get our tickets for the rides. We all know what we're doing. We're supporting the fire department. The Lancaster Public Library has their annual raffle in order to raise their funds. The list of ways that organizations address this need to support themselves whether it's for their operating costs or for some big expenditure, it goes on and on. There are all kinds of ways that groups do this. And in some ways, the church is no different. We need money for the electricity, for uh, the different expenses of the church. On a day like this, we're thankful that we pay our electric bill because we have air conditioning. We need it in order to support the employees of the church. We need it in order to, to, to pay for all of the expenses, like I mean, even printing bulletins. That costs money. So it makes sense. But unlike the fire department or the library, or unlike the fire department, we don't offer a carnival in return for the tickets. I'm not afraid to talk about money. I don't shy away from it. And it's not because I am out of touch with how the economy is going. I saw the jobs report that came out last week, and the different interpretations of it. And this recession seems to be dragging on longer than many of us thought it would. And there are lots of reasons that this happens. And often this whole conversation gets appropriated and snatched up by politicians, especially when they're pointing the finger at each other. And nobody has a corner on that market either, that both sides do it. They both point at each other. But the truth is, politics don't have as much to do with the economy as the politicians, for instance, say that it does. But that's not even the real point. The real point, the reason that I'm not afraid to bring up this touchiest of subjects, the, the M word, is, be, not, is, is because it's a part of our church covenant. But it's not just because it's a part of our church covenant. It's because Jesus talked about money. Jesus didn't shy away from the subject. And we covenant together to to support our ministry in our church. Now, there are lots of places in the Bible where Jesus talked about money, and 
lots of places that people go to whenever they want to talk about money. I like John 6 because it's not about money. See, we get sidetracked and we get distracted when we're talking about a subject. Often we get sidetracked by the very content of the discussion. The beauty of this passage is it's about giving oneself over to God and trusting. Now, there are all these places where Jesus talked directly about money. There's the rich man in Lazarus. There's the rich young ruler Jesus told to sell all his possessions. There's the widow's might, two mites, two drops, yet all her wealth and land fall from a steady heart through a trembling hand. From others, wanton wealth foams higher and brave. The others simply cast away. She only gave. There are lots of places in the Bible that talk directly about money, but John 6, where we find these words in Jesus' mouth, I am the bread of life, is about trust and commitment to God. The reason that we're in John 6 is because giving to the church isn't about paying our dues. That's not what it is, it's about at all. It's about giving of ourselves. We give the best we have, and we do it in faith and out of our commitment to Christ. In today's terms, in a world that still seems to be dragging on and on in this recession, we're a bit like the people in this passage. They were so distracted by the food and the, the conversation that they couldn't get what Jesus was talking about. They were impressed and they wanted more of Jesus. What are we going to eat? Jesus says, don't waste your energy striving for perishable food like that, stuff that's going to waste away anyway. Work for the food that's going to stick with you. Food that nourishes your lasting life. Food that only the Son of Man can provide. He and what He does are guaranteed by God the Father to last. Now they just saw Him feed the 5,000 and they were mighty, mighty impressed. I mean, <clears throat> and it was impressive. It was a miracle. And this, this Jesus thing was something <coughs> worth joining in. I want to jump in on that. I mean, he can take the loaves and fishes and just multiply them. They saw these miracles and they wanted to be a part of it. But they still, or maybe I should say we, want security. They wanted to be a part of it, but they wanted to know about the food. We still want our assurances. For us, giving to God can be a bit like this. Sometimes when we give, we hesitate because we can be like the people to whom Jesus was talking. Sure, I'll give. But let me just make sure of this thing over here first. The way we live sometimes doesn't reflect a life that is just absolutely and wholly sold out to Christ. And that's all Jesus is asking. I am the bread of life. I am the one you need. That's what he said. But just like those people in the conversation with him in John 6, we still want to keep our toes in the water. We come together. We gather around the Lord's table. We sing the songs. But it's not like the tickets of the carnival. We're not here because we like the music. We're not here because we like the feeling. We're here because we're sold out to Christ. We come together each week to worship, and to be a congregation of Christ followers. We have this covenant. And you know what? It's there for us. <clears throat> it's not a sacred cow. It's not something that we worship. This covenant is there to help us understand who we are when we say we are Kilmarnock Baptist Church. It's there to define what it means to be a part of this family. The people in John 6 brought up Moses. They knew their history. I love it. I love it. They, 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 knew, they knew what had happened, what had gone before them. Oh, Jesus, you know, we were in the desert. They have that sense of living history. We were in the desert. And, 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 and Moses <clears throat> gave us manna from heaven to eat. And Jesus is like, oh. Moses didn't do anything. Moses did what God empowered him to do. God gave the manna. 
in order to let you survive. They say, why don't you just give us a clue <coughs> about who you are? They were still weren't sure. Just, just a hint of what's going on. Jesus, just lift up the flap and let us see under it. See what's up and we'll commit us ourselves. Show us what you can do. Reminds me of the line from Jesus Christ Superstar where Jesus is sent to see King Herod. Any of you who remember it will remember the very funny scene where he says, walk across my swimming pool and then I'll know that you are cool. You know, and he's prepared to let Jesus go if he'll just show him a few tricks. Well, we're not here for a carnival. I love the carnival, but that's not what we're here for. <clears throat> Jesus went on. The real significance of that scripture is not what, that Moses gave you bread from heaven, but that my Father is right now offering you bread from heaven. The real bread, the bread of God came down from heaven and is giving life to the world. It's like they were saying, Jesus, you know the economy used to be good. Don't bring up the covenant right now. Let's, let's wait until it's good again, and then we'll talk about it. And putting this passage in today's terms, Jesus' response might sound like this. You're missing the point. You're focusing on the here and now, and I'm talking about something bigger, something more profound, something that goes further. I'm talking about true and deep meaning, and we want that. We all want that, that true, deep meaning. The ones in John 6 want it. They say, give us what you're talking about, Jesus. We want in on that. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Our covenant means making a promise to one another and to God. We are, those of us who have gathered to worship, we are the church. We are God's people. And there are certain things we commit to do as God's people who are part of this Christian family. And one of those things we commit to do is to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of this ministry and the expenses of the church. <clears throat> those aren't even my words. I took them from the covenant. But I'm not ashamed to say them, and I would claim them gladly, because these words, whether they're about money, or about the decisions we make, or the way we live our lives, require us to trust God, to put our faith in Christ Jesus, and to believe, to have faith that He is who He says He is, and to have belief in the continuing leadership of the Holy Spirit, the continuing guidance of the Holy Spirit as it unfolds God's plan before us. This covenant promise means that we hear Jesus' words in John 6, I am the bread of life, and we live out our calling. As we seek to be the people God has called us to be, we give of ourselves and that's the important part, that we give of who we are and trust God when we do. We bow your heads with me.